Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another example. Again, it has two switches, one that closes at time equals zero, and a second switch that closes at time equals two. We have a six amp source in this case, so we have a current source instead of a voltage source. So things are a little bit different here. We're trying to find the current through the inductor starting at time equals zero, through time equals two, and then beyond. So again, we're going to have to do this in two stages, first between the time equals zero to two, and then for time after two seconds. So part A, we're going to let time be less than two seconds, so from zero to two seconds, and we need to find the current through the inductor at t equals zero first. So when time is equal to zero, notice that if this, none of these switches have closed yet, the current will simply flow through the 15 ohm resistor and not reach the inductor. So we can say that there's not going to be any current, zero amps through the inductor initially when there's no switches closed. And when the first switch closes, the inductor will, will oppose the change in the current. So initially there'll be zero current through the inductor after the first switch closes. But then after a while, when the time has elapsed, and of course, reaching a time of two seconds, I would say infinitely, infinity, but of course that's not the case. When time reaches two seconds, you expect then to have the final current being reached. Now that depends, of course, on the, uh, the time constant. So let's find what the time constant is. So first we'll get the Thevenin resistance, which means that once we close the switch, the current source will be removed from the circuit. We simply have a one single loop branch right here and let's see here that means we go through a 15 ohm resistor a 10 ohm resistor and a 20 ohm resistor so what we can say is that the Thevenin resistance is going to be equal to simply the sum of all the resistances so it would be 15 plus 10 plus 20 that's equal to 45 ohms and from that we should be able to find the time constant so the time constant is equal to the inductance divided by the Thevenin resistance. The inductance is 5 Henry's. The Thevenin resistance is 45 ohms. So that's 5 divided by 45, or 1 ninth of a second. Well, that's a very small time constant. So you can see that after 2 seconds, you've gone at least 5 time constants, way more than that. So you pretty well have reached maximum current at that time. So when we have steady state current, we can say that the current then will simply be V over the total resistance. Well, let's see here, not V divided by the total resistance. In that case, you can see that all the current will flow. Well, no, it will not flow through all of that. It will flow through one branch and the other branch. So basically, what we need to do here is take the six amps of current and divide it between the two branches. We have a 15 ohm branch and a 30 ohm branch so this will be equal to, when we want to find out the current through this branch right here, it will be the resistance in the other branch divided by the total resistance, which is 15 plus 30. So that will be one-third times six, or two amps, is the final current through the inductor after two seconds. If we now want to express the current in the inductor, or through the inductor, I should say, uh, from zero to two seconds, we can say that I as uh, when zero less than t less than two seconds is equal to that would be the current after two seconds plus the current after zero seconds minus the current after two seconds multiplied times e to the minus t over tau and we're plugging the numbers we have the current from zero to two seconds probably want to make that equal to two seconds and equal to zero seconds is equal to I at two seconds well, let's see here that would be two amps plus I at zero seconds which is zero minus I at two seconds which is minus two amps so let's just make that into a minus two amps multiply times E to the minus T over tau since tau is one ninth that would be minus nine T so this would be the current through the inductor for the first two seconds of the circuit. What happens next? After two seconds, the second switch closes, and now the current will bypass the 20 ohm resistor and go directly from the 10 ohm resistor to the inductor. So that would 
increase the current through the inductor because if there's less resistance on this branch, the current will increase. Initially, the inductor will fight the increase, so right after the second switch closes, the current through the inductor will be the same as it was right before the switch closes, so that would be 2 amps. And so what we can do then here is, we'll start for part B, so now the time is greater or equal to 2 seconds, and again we find that the current through the inductor at time equals 2 seconds is going to be exactly the same as what was right before, which is 2 amps. Now we want the current I when time is equal to infinity. Of course, at that point you can see that you have 6, six amps divided between this branch and this branch, but now the resistance makeup will be different, and so now it's going to be 6 amps times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch, which is 15, divided by the sum of the two. Now the 20 ohm resistor will not be there, so it'll be 15 plus 10, that'll be 15 over 25, which is equal to 6 amps, times 15 over 25, that would be 3 fifths. So 3 fifths, uh, that would be 18 divided by 5, which is equal to 3.6 amps. So after a lot of time has elapsed, now the current through the inductor will be 3.6 amps instead of 2 amps. So for the first 2 seconds, it'll go from 0 to 2 amps. For the second, after 2 seconds, it'll then increase from 2 amps all the way up to 3.6 amps. But how fast will that happen? Well, again, we're going to need to find the time constant, which means we're going to first find the Thevenin resistance. So now that both switches are closed, we we remove the current source, that's what we do to find Thevenin resistance, like the current source isn't there. Notice from the inductor, we can go through this path, to this path, and then to that path. So you can see that the total resistance now will be 15 plus 10, or 25 ohms. 15 plus 10, which is 25 ohms. And the time constant, which is equal to the inductance divided by the Thevenin resistance is equal to 5 Henrys divided by 25 ohms, which is one-fifth of a second. So now we can go ahead and write down the second equation so that the current through the inductor for time is greater than 2 seconds is going to be equal to the current at infinity plus the current at 2 seconds minus the current at infinity multiply times e to the minus t over tau. Now we've got to be careful about the t here because this only is good for when we when the second switch closes. So the way the best way to write that would be to write it as t minus 2 divided by tau because the, the second switch closed after two seconds and we want this to be e to the 0 over tau so this becomes equal to 1 and we have this as the initial current after the second switch closes. So now let's go ahead and plug in the values. This is equal to I at infinity, which is 3.6 amps, plus I at 2 seconds, which is 2 amps, minus I at infinity, which is 3.6 amps, multiplied times E to the minus, that would be T, oh, wait a minute, let me, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, because I realized that tau is 1 over 9, so 1 over tau would be 9. Oh, well, 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 take that back, I'm over here. Tau is 1 over 5, so 1 over tau is 5, so it would be minus 5 times t minus 2. And simplifying this, so we have the current when time is greater than 2 seconds is equal to 3.6 amps minus 1.6 amps multiplied times e to the minus 5 times t minus 2. And so to make sure that this is correct, all we have to do is plug in time equals 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, e to the 0 is 1, 3.6 minus 1.6 is 2, and that gives us the correct value for the current at time equals 2 seconds. And then, I guess I can go greater than or equal to 2, and then when time is a very large number, e to minus very large number goes to zero, this goes to zero, end up with 3.6 amps, and that would be the total current at the very end when we again reach steady state after the second switch closes. And that's how we figure it all out.